really tranquil. Looks like a monkey. Sure. They can't jump through. Oh. <laughs> Negro Socks Dental is famous for its sugar cane. It's truly the sugar hub of the Philippines. So as you can Negros Occidental is known for its green, lush fields of sugarcane, which extend as far as the eye can see. Driving along the roads of Negros Occidental is like driving through a sea of green, and contained within the verdant fields of sugarcane is a world of natural beauty waiting to be discovered. Negros Occidental is rich in natural beauty. It has hot springs in abundance. These still, calm pools are nature's natural baths. Their warm waters, soothing and rich in minerals. Water is truly one of nature's greatest, greatest sculptors. Here we have one of um, the seven beautiful waterfalls in Gawahon Ecology Park, which is 162 hectares in total of natural Filipino wildlife. Water is also one of nature's finest sculptors. The water working tirelessly to form these magnificent falls and rockscapes. The local tradition is to wash one's face in the refreshing cool water. Each of the seven waterfalls is accessible by foot and the trail offers plenty of opportunities to bathe in tranquility or to have fun and frolic in the river. Water also Sorry. holds a sacred significance. This naturally occurring spring is the counterpart of a very special shrine whose story stands as a testimony to how the endearing nature of the Philippines and its people triumphed over the turbulence and despair of war. Before entering the Japanese shrine, it is a tradition to wash and partake of the water. Okay, before visiting this beautiful Japanese shrine, we're going to obey some Japanese tradition which is to uh, wash our hands in the shrine and also take some water from the shrine. It should be safe as it's a natural spring, so the water should be tasty. Okay, I don't know, over here. So wash my hands. Okay, I'm gonna take a bit of water. Um, yeah, just into my mouth, hopefully. Mm. That's lovely and fresh, actually. That's gorgeous. Okay, now it's time to see the shrine. This beautiful shrine houses the remains of a remarkable man. Jino Shiradori is a lieutenant of the Japanese Imperial Army, who is the same pilot who was instructed to bomb Salai's San Diego Pro-Cathedral. But upon seeing women and children fleeing to the cathedral for refuge, he defied orders. And this is what the shrine is a testament to, a truly remarkable man. The views in and around the village of Patag, where the shrine is situated, are truly enchanting. There are also some historical artefacts. Yeah, this relic from the Second World War, this anti-aircraft Japanese gun, was actually discovered by a sugar farmer who was actually cultivating the field and clipped part of the uh, machine. And he excavated and actually found uh, it in perfect working order. The mountainsides and valleys are Calatrava, a home to the native Philippine monkey. Over time, these monkeys have grown accustomed to man and welcome visitors, or more precisely, their food. The Philippines has to be one of the richest countries in the world in terms of both natural resources as well as ecology. And I'm very excited today to be able to have the opportunity to see some monkeys in their natural, well, natural habitat, wild monkeys. 
Monkeys are highly dexterous, agile creatures, perfectly adapted to bound from branch to branch with ease. <laughs> Yet even a monkey can lose its grip over the excitement of a free meal. Monkeys have an innate sense of curiosity, coupled with a playful nature. They are also extremely caring, loving creatures. And proudly sitting before us is the alpha male of the troop. Negros has a diverse range of ecosystems, ranging from tropical forests and coastal shores to wetlands, each one having something different to offer. The wetlands in Pulupandan are home to several rare bird species. To reach the wetlands, one can ride a pump boat from Bago City downstream to the quiet fishing village of Tampong. The boat ride offers the perfect opportunity to enjoy a cool breeze, the warm sun, and take in the beautiful scenery of the Philippine Riverside. Ah, uh, see, simple. We have the bridge white chips tape and say. Okay, let's go. This can in. Okay, cool. From landing, there is a short 30-minute walk through the wetlands. These untouched wetlands are home to many species of birds that peacefully coexist with one another. And like clockwork, just before dusk approaches, the birds return to their roosting grounds. Okay, so we're actually very lucky to be able to see these ducks. They're actually Philippine wild ducks. Really, really nice. I'm just gonna see if I can see some more birds. Ahead is a flock of Philippine wild ducks wading through the water. And in the distance, we can see a solitary purple-headed heron standing in the water. As long as the wetlands continue to be preserved, so were the breeding of these rare native species. That was actually a very rare treat. No normally these birds scare very easily, um, but because the wind was blowing in our favour, they didn't smell us or they didn't um, hear us at all. So that was actually very rare. Um, wild birds, particularly the wild ducks, are particularly scared of humans. So that was a real treat. From the land to the air to the sea, Negros Occidental contains many rare forms of wildlife. Benista Beach Resort is home to a rare species of crab that are found in only a handful of places across the world. <laughs> this army of blue crabs tirelessly patrol the shoreline and keep guard over this picturesque coastline worthy of a postcard. This beach is the perfect place to relax, enjoy the sun, and watch the boat sail by. Not only can you admire the beautiful creatures of Negros Occidental from afar, one can also interact with them up close. El Toro Zoo in the city of La Castellana is home to many endangered species. This zoo serves as a place to preserve and propagate these rare species, as well as stimulate interest in the animals. It houses a collection of exotic nocturnal animals, as well as an extensive collection of birds, fish and reptiles, and a varied selection of species indigenous to the Philippines, such as the Visayan spotted deer, which is an endangered species native to the island of Negros. So these owls that look like something out of Harry Potter are actually Filipino, native to the Philippines. And the bird over there is making a very, very strange noise. So, as you can see, the Philippines is really, really rich in um, biodiversity. They have some beautiful pigeons of all sorts of varieties. I thought pigeons normally just come in grey and poo in the city, but these guys are really beautiful. I've just been told this is the most dangerous bird here and I'm feeling very brave so I'm actually going to feed the most dangerous bird here. Ah, see? That was easy. Easy, see? Easy. <laughs> The zoo is also home to a variety of different monkeys. Friendly? 
I'm gonna try giving the monkey some more banana in the hope that we can become friends. Um, come on over. Come on. Um. <laughs> Friendly monkey. <laughs> Let's just try one more time. Come here. I am very scared because monkeys are strong. It's not gonna bite me, will it? I've been assured it won't bite me. But the size of its teeth, I'm not, I'm not too sure. Okay, let's bribe the monkey with some banana. Okay, calm down. Okay, okay, okay. Yeah. Bye bye, monkey. Bye bye. Touch the head. Oh, I'm not sure about that. Oh, wow. And he doesn't look happy. So this is an extra special treat. We have the biggest crocodile in the whole of Negros. He's um, 18 years old and almost 16 feet. This is a colossal titan of a reptile. From the large to the small, the silkworm is among Negros Occidental's smallest and most fascinating creatures. See, nice and friendly. The local climate supports the growth of mulberry trees the leaves of which are the staple diet of the silkworm. From the moment the silkworms are born, they will spend most of their lives eating, and will molt a total of four times. After the silkworms have gorged themselves and reached maximum size, they will weave themselves into a silken cocoon. Okay, so these are the cocoons of the silkworms. So inside each one of these is a, is a silkworm. The silkworm can roughly lay about almost a mile worth of silk um, per silkworm. The cocoons are then boiled and are ready to be transformed to a variety of products. Mm -hmm. Most of the products produced at Oyster Silk Farm are made solely by hand. Each cocoon painstakingly stretched out over a metal frame. It takes wow. some 20 to 30 sheets to make a single handkerchief. The silk can also be dyed and woven into a variety of garments, bags and sheets. So this barong is actually made out of 50% pineapple fibre and 50% silk. Silk farming is one of many thriving industries in Negros Occidental. A newly emerging sector is organic farming and the advent of eco-organic tourism. After a long day of exploring, I was fortunate enough to have stumbled upon a charming organic restaurant in Bacola City. <laughs> Negros Occidental is a hub of organic farming. Organic produce not only includes fruit and vegetables, but extends to a wide variety of beauty products, honey, rice and chicken. After sampling the delightful fresh organic produce, I was keen to learn more about the organic way of living. Mm -hmm. How exactly is organic produce farmed and what makes it so tasty? Negros certainly has the perfect climate to grow crops and uh, vegetables and what better way to grow them than organically? We're here at Rafa Farm to discover some of the products that they produce and some of the foods which they can make with their organic produce. Does this have any Rafa Valley Organic Farm holds the secret to the organic way of living. It is located in Don Salvador Benedicto with precise elevation and cool air. The perfect setting to learn about organic farming practices and to appreciate the beauty of farming itself. Okay, I just learned a very interesting gardening tip. If you're short for space and, and don't have a big garden, just get some bamboo, uh, carve it out and you can plant your lettuce and it will grow healthily. Just like this, I've actually never seen an asparagus plant before, but they have very strange leaves. So where did this come from? It just grows. Yeah, it just grows. And I can eat this raw, yeah? yeah? You can eat it raw. Which bit's the tastiest it's bit? That side. <laughs> Not this bit. Yeah. <laughs> so, mm, that's nice. I love asparagus actually. However, it is not only fruit and vegetables that yield health benefits. Flowers. Yeah. So do many of the flowers native to the Philippines. That smells really nice. Really strong. After touring the farm, the best is now to come. It's time to partake in its fresh produce. Freshly picked and bursting full of flavour, a feast of organic cooking. Ruffa Valley Farm is the epitome of the organic lifestyle. Its grounds are the perfect environment for relaxing, 
detoxifying and rejuvenation. It is certainly the perfect getaway from the bustle of city life. Okay, we've sampled some absolutely beautiful fruit, beautiful herbs and random native flowers. And all of this is actually possible due to the lovely nutritious volcanic soil which has come from this mountain over here called Mount Canla'on. Mount Canla'on dominates the landscape with its sheer size and natural beauty. This active stratovolcano stands sentinel over the land and soars to a height of almost 8,000 feet. Scaling the heights of Mount Canla'on from the jump off point of La Calot City, one can not only appreciate Negros Occidental's beauty, but one can also sample some of its rich culture of its people. The landscape has an almost Jurassic feel to it. The music is rich and vibrant, with a distinctly Latino flavour. The drum beaters are certainly enjoying themselves. With all this catchy music, it was hard to resist not having a go. However, it's not as easy as the drum beaters make it look. As the night fades and day turns to night, the world turns to silver under a red lit sky. At dusk, Mount Kandaon takes upon a magical, mystical quality. Scaling the heights still further, we take you to Rafael Sala's natural park. As you ascend to the heights where the clouds reside, the clouds envelop you and make you feel like you are entering an almost mystical world. Religion is certainly a very integral part of the Philippine culture as well as its history. Nearly every small community in this local area has its own shrine. This beautiful shrine here was built by its landowner and it represents almost um, Mount Sinai and hence the two sets of Ten Commandments over there. So um, it's time to investigate and see what the shrine upstairs is actually like. The shrine at Ciudad Immaculata is built upon a natural outcrop of rock rising from the surrounding lush green vegetation. Among the lush foliage are many beautiful statues watching over this religious site. Each statue framed by the beauty of nature itself. Well it was definitely worth the long journey up the top of the hill. This um, chapel is really beautiful. The paintings are magnificent and it's uh, a lovely place uh, with nature to contemplate the meaning of the world and meaning of life. This chapel is renowned both locally as well as internationally. It's famous for people who have dreams and they become inspired to find this place. And hence these beautiful um, pictures here which focus on the clouds, obviously heaven, but also connotations with the dreams and the inspirations of God uh, in their dreams. There are many religious sites spread out over the area. Each church and chapel unique in its own right. Through architecture and imagery, a people can show their identity. The Chapel of the Cartwheels, found in Manapla, is made by the workers, for the workers. The tools of their labour transformed into a place of worship. The cartwheels which were once used to transport sugarcane, now form the walls. What were once mortars are now candlestick holders. And what was a pestle is now the font. The stone chairs and altars give this church a very natural feeling, as do the beautiful wooden carvings. In fact, every piece of this chapel was made from locally harvest timber. On first appearance, one may mistake these radiant windows for stained glass, but upon closer inspection, you can see that they are in fact made from broken bottles. So randomly out of nowhere, driving from um, the church we've just visited, uh, this is this lovely fruit stall. And what better backdrop have we got than miles and miles of sugarcane? 
It really gives you a feeling of how much sugarcane is really in this region. Sugarcane is one of the primary industries of Negros Occidental. Sugarcane, sugarcane, sugarcane. It's everywhere. Driving around is like driving through a lush sea of green. It is literally everywhere you look, everywhere you see, for miles and miles around. And it's one of the most important industries in the area. And of course, apart from the obvious eating of sugar, sugar has a plethora of uses. And today we're going to find out exactly what those other uses are. At San Carlos City, bioethanol plant, the fibrous husks of the sugar cane are used to generate eco-friendly electricity. Negros Occidental is truly leading the way in green technology. The sugarcane industry is intertwined into the fabric of Negros Occidental and has played a pivotal role in shaping the region's history. Within the Victoria's Milling Company compound in Victoria City is the Church of St. Joseph the Worker, which was built by the sugar baron Miguel Osario. The church's exterior is adorned with murals made from countless pieces of broken glass collected by the residents of the mill. Inside this rather non-assuming church is the acclaimed mural of the Craggy Face Christ, a splash of vivid and vibrant colours. The wooden statues of angels vanquishing serpents and sin, these are but a few of the reminders that are laid throughout the church for all who enter to see. In stark contrast to the modern, we have the Cathedral of St. Sebastian in Bacolod City. The Cathedral of St. Sebastian is certainly one of the most iconic structures in the whole of Bacolod. It's truly uh, an inspiring and colossal structure. And interestingly, the construction is just as interesting. The people who constructed it were actually prisoners. The reason being is because the priests asked the local government for help. Uh, and as a deal of using the prison labour, the priests also had to design the local prison um, of which the prisoners were housed. So it's quite an interesting and varied history, but the result is a magnificent uh, religious structure. The cathedral is as large as it is impressive, elegant and steeped in history and tradition. The cathedral is just one of many historic attractions. Negros Occidental is a region rich in history and architecture, with beautiful towns and cities spread throughout the region. Bacolod City itself is home to several museums, such as the Pope John Paul II's Tower, built to commemorate the Pope's visit to the city in 1981. It is the tallest of all structures in the city and houses an extensive collection of papal memorabilia. From its rooftop you can enjoy uninterrupted views of the city and its surroundings. The Museo Negrense de la Salle contains an extensive collection of religious artefacts dating back to antiquity. You can lose yourself in the details of the intricately carved statues and the fine craftsmanship of many of the museum pieces. There are many stunning ancestral homes throughout Negros Occidental, many of which are nestled among the fields of sugar cane. The Hacendas, which were once home to the wealthy sugar barons. Nowadays, many of these homes are heritage sites, open to viewings, with some offering the opportunity to stay overnight, such as Hacienda Luisa, which features views of Mount Canaan. Others have been transformed into museums, such as the Dizon Ramos Museum, the upper part of the house is a snapshot of time long since past, preserving a way of life for future generations. While the lower levels of the house contain collections of glassware, horses, dolls, key rings and mascara, many of these historic treasures have overseen important events in history. It was here at the ancestral home of the Araneta family where the Philippine president issued his last set of orders during the Second World War before departing for Australia.
From military command post to popular resort, the now named Buenos Aires Mountain Resort sits proudly atop a small hill and has a spring-fed swimming pool. Climbing up the long set of steps, you can take in the fragrance of the beautiful flower beds. This ancestral home boasts attractive gardens, the focal point of which are the lover's trees, the rubber tree essentially wrapping itself around the eucalyptus. And atop the balcony, one can revel in the majestic views. Negros is a province blessed with natural beauty and we're very lucky to be able to enjoy that natural beauty and a myriad of wonderful resorts such as this one here. There are many resorts spread out over the region, each unique in their own right, unified by a common theme of man blending in with nature and the surroundings. The range of hotels available span across a broad spectrum from modern luxurious hotels to rustic mountaintop retreats. The Negros Occidental is a place full of history, culture and natural wonder. The people are warm and friendly and its striking green filter sugarcane and abundant wildlife are sure to make a lasting impression. <laughs>